morning, good morning to all on this wet Tuesday morning. I hope everybody's keeping dry. That's a joke. <laughs> uh, the meeting is called to order. And um, we'll have, uh, first we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance from Director Rosa. Just want to say it's an honor. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. I will, uh, are there any objections to the agenda or any changes to the agenda? I believe there is one. Uh, a change to the agenda? No, it's just, it's an update to it's an update to the uh, to the uh, committee chairs. Okay, fine. Uh, hearing none, uh, the agenda is approved. Uh, are there any? Uh, does anyone have any changes to the minutes for January second, January eighteenth, and January nineteenth? Hearing none, the agenda is approved. Um, the chair does not have a report today. All right. uh, we have a lot going on, and uh, I think we will entertain a lot during the, uh, during the uh, agenda. The only thing I will announce is that uh, Bunny Carpenter will be resigning effective on February 21st or 2nd. All right. and, uh, because he is out of town and uh, had every intention of attending all of our meetings, even to the extent that she purchased a laptop, et cetera, so she could. But she, as she looked at her itinerary on her worldwide trip, she was not going to be able to fulfill that obligation. And so uh, being Bunny, she has graciously decided to resign. It's not official until the 21st of this month. And so we will not have any um, announcement, official announcement or official request for candidates until that time. But I thought I would previously announce that uh, today. Okay, uh, now we have to move on to the CEO report. Thank you, President Hopkins, honorable members of the board. This morning I want to touch on a few key items in the village. First of all, I want to start with a reminder about after hours contacts given we're in a rainy spell right now. Residents who experience urgent issues, leaks, and backups between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday through Friday may call resident services at 949-597-4600. After normal business hours calling, that same number provides an option to be transferred to security services. Alternatively, residents can call security directly at 949-580-1400 and staff will mobilize appropriate resources to address the concern. Of course, during a life-threatening emergency, please dial 911. We also want to let you know about a new customer service feature. This is the callback feature in resident services. This is especially important on days like today when we have a large number of calls into resident services. BMS launch, soft launch, the callback feature, on the resident services telephone system on November 1st. Residents may now enter a callback telephone number instead of remaining on hold. Residents are called back in the order they are in the queue. The benefits of this is an enhancement to customer service. This reduces hold times and customer frustration and more effectively manages call traffic to ensure less congested peak times. I also want to thank our residents for their good work in managing their organic waste. Between January and November 2023, village residents diverted almost 135 tons of organic material from landfills. This material tra travels to CRNR's new state-of-the-art anaerobic digester facility, which is located in Paris, California. And this converts the village's organic waste into renewable natural gas and organic fertilizer. Clean, renewable natural gas fuels the fleet of CRNR vehicles that serve our community and others in our region. This also produces rich organic soil 
that's used by farmers, landscapers, and so forth. And this is simply a picture of that anaerobic digestion facility. Also, please allow and update our CRNR's efforts to place low-profile bins in the community. As you know, CRNR is purchasing raw materials to manu manufacture low-profile bins for the village. This makes it easier for disposal of trash and recyclables. Of the 922 bins in the community, 400 have been exchanged for a 42% completion rate. Residents may call or email CRNR to request a specific bin location exchange at lagunawoods-recycles at crrmail.com or by calling CRNR at 949-625-6735. As a reminder, this service is not required in CRNR's contract with the city, so we're very appreciative of their efforts to help our community in their needs. Residents may join the El Toro Water District's quarterly community advisory group meeting. This is where the district shares water, wastewater, and recycled water information with its customers. The next meeting is Thursday, February 8th at 1130 at the district's office. Reservations are required and available on the district's website. And lastly, if residents are looking for some rainy day fun, the 2024 Laguna Woods Arts Association Exhibit is now up and uh, available throughout the community center. There are more than 170 works of art displayed along the first and third floor hallways and in this boardroom. This includes acrylics, mixed media, oil, watercolors, and other mediums. Through Friday, March 1st, please pick up a ballot from the concierge desk if you're interested in voting for your favorite artwork. And that concludes my update today. Thank you, President. Thank you, uh, President uh, well, CEO Foster. Uh, next is our uh, open forum. At this time, members only may address the Board of Directors uh, regarding items not on the agenda and within the jurisdiction of the Board of Directors. The Board reserves the right to limit the total amount of time to, for the open forum to 30 minutes. A member may speak only once during the forums. Speakers may not, be, may, may not give their time to other people, and there should be no audio or video recording by attendees. Members may attend the meeting uh, on Zoom, okay, or they may call at 1-669-900-6833 uh, or email meeting at vmsinc.org. So with that, are there any members that have comments? Uh, the first uh, member speaker is Ellen Leonard. Mm -hmm. Hi, good morning. Um, I want to talk about the, uh, the sewer system on the uh, main streets because I think GRF is responsible for the main streets like Sevilla, Castilla. And um, and I know we don't get rain like this very often. I think it's the thousand year, I think I was told, rain. Anyway, when you drive down, and I might be wrong, but when I drive down Castilla to Sevilla and out the gate, the only sewer I see or the, drain, the drainage is um, on the right in front of the gate, uh, guard gate shack. It's right there on El Toro. And if that is not cleaned out, the water will back up because the hill starts where Castilla is and it rolls downwards and the water comes rushing down. So I just think that, and if I'm wrong, I'd like to, for somebody to correct me about the sewer system and who keeps it clear because if it's full of debris, does somebody responsible for going around and cleaning, cleaning it up? So, okay, thank you. Okay, we have a uh, member email from Chris Collins. Okay, Chris Collins, 3306Q. Thank you, neighbors helping neighbors. Holiday cheer can take many forms. For the foundation of Laguna Woods Village, this past December, it meant that we were once again able to provide holiday cheer to nearly 150 village residents. 
With the help of social services and the South County Outreach Food Pantry, the foundation was able to identify those in need of such cheer and provided them with grocery cards to ensure each has a special holiday meal, something that they might not have had otherwise. We would not have been able to do this without the generous donations of individuals, clubs, and other organizations in the village. These donations are particularly appreciated since inflation has negatively impacted many residents. In 2023, Foundation Emergency Financial Assistance to Residents jumped to a little over 177,000 from approximately 120,000 in 2022. This year, the Foundation was able to continue funding of Meals on Wheels, provide scholarships to Alzheimer's support services, transport residents to the food pantry, and sustain fall prevention efforts, including the rental of emergency response devices, among other ongoing programs. In addition to all the individual residents who have donated, the foundation is also extremely grateful to the following clubs, religious organizations, and other groups that donated this past year, particularly since inflation caused higher expenses for them as well. American Italia Club, Aquadets, California Club, Center for Spiritual Living, Chicago, Chicago Club, College Club, Film Club, Hikers Club, Joyful Christian Church, Korean American Club, Lawn Bowling Club, Men's Golf Club, Needleworks Club, Potters and Sculpture Club, RV Wheelers, Republican Club, Scottish Heritage Club, Sleep Custers Club, Taiwanese Club, Table Tennis Club, Theater Guild. Best wishes for the new year, and thank you for your generous support of the foundation. It is truly neighbors helping neighbors. For more information, please go to our website at foundationsoflagunawoodsvillage.org or contact the foundations at 949-268-2246 or at foundations at comline.com. Please note that donations can always be made using PayPal on the foundation website. This concludes the email comment. Are there any more comments from the audience? Interesting. Okay. All right, we'll move on to the, uh, are there any responses to the? I would like to respond to Director Leonard and her question about storm drains. I can get specific locations for her, but as many of you know, we have storm crews that work throughout the storms to keep our storm drains clear other areas clear. These come from landscaping, they come from general services and maintenance and construction. So we have a very thorough uh, emergency response plan and our security forces are out there also observing and reporting problems. Thank you. Thank you. Director Rosa. Uh, is that location she uh, uh, pointed out, is that uh, within the gated community? Uh, Again, sir, I will have to look into the specific oh, okay. location. I don't know off the top of my head. All right. Thank you. I know when, when leaves, you know, regardless of how clean you keep it, when it rains, everything goes to the drain. So it's a, it's a challenging situation for, for any municipality, especially uh, a local one like this one. But we do our best. Okay, let's move on. Um, let's go to move on to the consent calendar. Okay. Uh, all matters listed under the consent calendar are recommended for action by the committees and will be enacted by the board with one motion. Okay. So, with that. I move the consent calendar. It's been. It's been moved and second. Are there any objections? So moved. The consent calendar is uh, ratified. This, and that includes both the finance committee as well as the resolution on the revised purchasing policy. Unfinished business, okay. We'll entertain a motion to approve the Drop-in lounge television program policy. Can you read that, please? Yes. Drop-in lounge television programming. I'm sorry. Resolution 90-24-XX. 
Whereas the drop-in lounge located at Clubhouse One is open seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. and is gathering is a gathering area for residents to have a cup of coffee, socialize, work on a jigsaw puzzle, read a magazine, conduct work, and or relax. And whereas altercations and arguments occurred among residents who had conflicting viewing preferences and interests resulting in security being called to the lounge on several occasions, which hindered the enjoyment and necessitated the removal of the television for safety purposes on Monday, December 17th, 2018. And whereas on March 14th, 2019, the Community Activities Committee passed a motion to reinstall the drop-in lounge television with restricted programming and closed captioning to Village Television TV6. And whereas since the reinstallation of the television, board members and staff continue to receive complaints regarding access to preferred programming and restriction of use of the remote for control of volume and channels. And whereas staff proposes the following viewing schedule for the drop-in lounge television from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. each day. And the Community Activities Committee reviewed and recommended this Clubhouse One drop-in lounge television programming on December 14th, 2023. On Monday, HGTV. On Tuesday, National Geographic. On Wednesday, Turner Classic Movies. On Thursday, The Food Network. On Friday, Discovery Channel. On Saturday, TNT. And on Sunday, Lifetime. Now, therefore, be it resolved, February 6th, 2024, that the Board of Directors of this corporation hereby adopts the aforementioned Clubhouse One drop-in lounge television programming and resolve further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized to carry out this resolution as written. I move we accept the, this, this proposition, I'm sorry, this resolution for the drop-in lounge television. Martin seconds. It's been moved and second. Are there any objections? Hearing none, motion is adopted. Uh, we are now going to hear uh, from, I guess, direct, uh, Director of Recreation, uh, Allison Giglio on Clubhouse One renovation update. Good morning, President Hopkins and board members. Uh, the closure is getting near and very real. Uh, recreation staff has successfully relocated 109 out of 110 rental groups, and we are still working with number 110 to try and find a suitable option for them. Uh, we appreciate the cooperation and flexibility from the clubs and classes as some had to downsize and adjust their activities a bit. Most of these groups were relocated to the Performing Arts Center, Clubhouse 6, and the Community Center. And we are working on relocating staff to support these activities. And we expect that some of our staff will be cross-training and assisting in other work centers. The fitness center will be expanding hours Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. and weekends from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. And the fitness center staff has information for users to utilize free gym memberships in the area at local gyms um, through their insurance. This option doesn't work for everyone, but several people have already signed up and it is an option for them. Uh, personal training is expected to continue and locations are being finalized. And probably our most exciting news update is that the projects team and maintenance and construction department were able to work with the contractor and adjust the safety fencing to allow for bocce and patant to play during the closure so that we have many happy people um, that are gonna be utilizing those facilities. And um, unfortunately, our mini gym users, archery and shuffleboard will remain closed. And we currently have minimal options for relocation within the village for those activities. Shuffleboard has found a possible option in a nearby community where they'd be playing with um, other members um, at, a, at a 55 plus community in the area. We've identified um, some areas in South County where volleyball players can meet some free, some for a nominal gym use fee, um, and some are outdoors, obviously, on days like today. That would not be a great option. 
um, but hopefully when it warms up a little bit, that might be an option for them. Uh, we also are looking to purchase a volleyball net um, that can double as a badminton net, and it can be set up in grass areas over at Clubhouse 2. So we're still working through the logistics of that. Um, because again, play may be restricted based on um, Clubhouse 2 rentals since they get that area as part of their rental. Um, there are some areas in Orange County for archery. Some are free, some may require a nominal fee and reservations. And these options have been or will be communicated with group leaders and users. Um, but anyone who has questions is encouraged to talk to Peter Kwan, our fitness supervisor. Uh, we are trying to get that information wrapped up and we are receiving information on a daily basis as we find options. So we appreciate feedback from the community as well. Um, our pools, um, pool one was supposed to close next week due to some critical maintenance and repairs that need to be done prior to the project. Uh, unfortunately, we just learned of a issue at pool five, um, which will keep it closed for another week. So we're working on scheduling. We will post the schedule for that pool as soon as possible. The pool schedules are changing almost on a weekly basis um, based on weather, based on annual maintenance, um, all kinds of factors. So we just ask for everyone's patience and please check the schedule before arriving at the pool. The Library and History Center, again, are going to remain open. Some good news is that with the opening of Bocce during the construction project, we have more parking available for um, not only Bocce players, but also to help the library and the History Center people. So uh, that was exciting news as well. And that concludes my update, and I'm available if you have any questions. And March 4th is the date we are we're going for it. <laughs> well, before, let me, let me just thank you and Director uh, or Manuel Gomez uh, for working diligently with the contractor, with the clubs, and with all other involved to, to make adjustments for this Clubhouse One closure for a long-awaited and necessary um, upfit. Uh, it's our oldest clubhouse. It's about 60 years old, about as old as the village. And uh, it's being closed like this for the first time for the upfit. And uh, there were quite a few people who were uh, concerned about uh, it being closed for six months. And so uh, by working with the contractor and the insurance company, because remember, when a contractor comes in, there's insurance behind that. So they work with all of those folks to be able to accommodate our special needs during this period. So thank you very much. Thank you. And Yvonne? Allison, would you like to um, give an update on how we're going to work the bus system, too? For those people that yes, are. the transportation hub, which is normally in front of Clubhouse One, is going to be relocated um, behind the Library and History Center in that parking lot next to it. Um, best case scenario, we don't have to adjust the bus schedules, so the the scheduling that people are used to will remain the same. It'll just move over a little bit. Um, they're going to be setting up temporary benches, um, some shade, and um, we're working with the library. Um, for restroom access, and if that doesn't work, then we will bring in some temporary restrooms to, to assist down there. But should be little impact to the actual schedules. They will be, um, obviously, we're going to have some other clubhouses in the mix now. Um, they'll be dropping off at those, so we're going to keep an eye on those schedules and make sure everyone's getting where they need to go. Okay. Are, are there any other updates? from any other organization within, I just, I, I saw, I saw a um, guy come in. So Thank I you, Mr. Had. Chair. I, I so apologize. I was pulled away to look at some rain uh, issues. And anyway, so here I am. Um, yes, as uh, Allison was reporting, um, I don't want to repeat anything that she's already reported. We are scheduled with the contractor to start on March 4th. Um, we do have some other work that we're looking at to do during the closure that was uh, not associated with the scope that was originally uh, contracted for. So um, one of those items is the archery building. We've been discussing the beams that support the lower roof. Um, we are moving forward with an RFP to get a contractor to our contractors to bid on this. Um, we also allowed the contractor that's doing the work to provide a bid as well, which would work out if uh, he is the low bidder. 
since he's already going to have his crews there and uh, whatnot. So um, outside of what Allison has already reported about the recreation and the accommodations that are made for the buses, and we're working with uh, you know, general ser services uh, to assist in anything that they may need uh, to help with that process. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, not too much more to add. Uh, really, Allison covered it. Uh, the main, our main purpose was not to disrupt the bus schedule, because then that creates obviously a big uh, public outreach uh, effort and confusion uh, for our riders, and we didn't want to do that. So I think the location for the alternate transportary transportation hub just east of the uh, library and historical center there is ideal for us and then uh, that seems to be working out great. Welcome. No change in schedule. Okay, great. All right, next we'll move on to the committee appointments. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Resolution 90-24-XX, GRF Committee Appointments. I'll read just the changes. But resolve February 6th, 2024, that the following persons are hereby appointed and ratified to serve on the committees of this corporation. So Community Activities Committee remains the same. Finance Committee remains the same. Information ITAC remains the same. Sorry. Sorry. Security and community access remains the same. The other committees, oh, I missed it. Sorry. Landscape committee remains the same. Maintenance and construction committee is the same. Clubhouse renovation ad hoc committee remains the same. The media communications remains the same. Website ad hoc committee remains the same. The broadband committee, uh, Reza Karimi, has been added as the alternate for third. Mobility and vehicles committee remains the same. Security and community access remains the same. For the other committees, disaster preparedness task force remains the same. Laguna Woods Village traffic hearings, the same. On the select audit task force, Andy Ginocchio from third has been replaced by Peggy Moore from third. And executive hearings committee at the moment remains the same. The space planning ad hoc committee remains the same. A correspondent has been changed. Elsie Addington is no longer our correspondent. Resolved further that resolution 90-2402 adopted January 2nd, 2024 is hereby superseded and canceled and resolved further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution. I move that we approve this resolution. Martin seconds. A question? Yes, uh, Mr. President, if it's possible, you could please add Mr. Uh, William Cohen to the Broadband Ad Hoc Committee. If we could be. amend the yeah, resolution. The suggestion is to add uh, Bill Cohen to the um, to Broadband Ad Hoc. Bill Cohen, as as what? Just uh, GRF? Rec as GRF. A regu regular. Okay. Thank you. Am I on it? Can you kick me off. Okay, another, another suggestion, Juanita? Question. <clears throat> Since the Media Communications Committee was divided and uh, the media portion primarily was taken off, 
Um, have we made any progress in where that's going to go? There are some very big issues with our cable system, et cetera, um, and, and our media with yeah, Channel 6 uh, that right now have no place to go. Yeah, those, those areas are being addressed as we speak, and they're being addressed by the Broadband Ad Hoc Committee. Uh, which is where that particular organization from a VMS perspective resides right now. So the ad hoc committee is taking care of both of those at the same time. And I've asked those committee chairs, both uh, the com comedian and com and communica media and communication and the broadband ad hoc, to take, take a look at their charters and divide them appropriately so that uh, all the issues are covered. Shouldn't we make that a standing committee then instead of an ad hoc? We'll do that when, uh, when they have finished their work, if that's okay. Thank you. Yes, Bill. There's an issue on the select audit <coughs> task force. Mm -hmm. An issue on the select audit task mm -hmm. force. Uh, I know you've, you've seen the, the email from the president of United Mutual uh, yes. asking that uh, um, uh, Ms. Choi be added, the treasurer from uh, from United, and that has not been resolved yet. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't quite get that. Uh, the president of United Mutual has requested that their treasurer be on the audit task force, and that has not been resolved yet. They haven't had that. Yes, you yet. you actually have uh, the full authority to to support that okay. that uh, suggestion. Um, in the past, it's been tradition that the uh, Select Audit Task Force be chaired by the uh, treasurer of GRF. All other members can come from other boards, mutual boards. There should be a representative from each of the, of the boards as well. Uh, but it does not necessarily have to be a board member. I okay. should say each one of the mutuals, but not necessarily on the board. Understood. Okay. So it's been uh, – it's – it's an independent task force uh, meant to oversee um, the, what, what is going on with regards to the uh, audit. All right, I'll take care of it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are we adding a name or not? Yes, we're going to add, add that name. Okay. What is the name again, please? <coughs> Mickey. Mickey. Mickey Choi Ho. Oh, I'll, get, I'll get it correct, so just one moment. This is for me. It is Mickey, M-I-K-I-E, Choi, C-H-O-I, and then Ho, H-O-E. That's from United. Yeah. Yep. So there's no set number. No set number on that. No set no. number. Okay. Uh, we've traditionally had four members, including the chair. You now have two from United and one from BMS, one from... Third and one from GRF. Oh, I'm sorry. I believe she's replacing Cynthia. Is she replacing P Cynthia? Cynthia. Yeah. Okay. Cynthia. Thank you. Yep. President Hopkins, may I please yes. make a correction? Yes. Diane Phelps is not representing BMS on this task force. She's representing GRF. G yes. 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 She represents GRF. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And the other, the other changes, too, uh, on the broadband ad hoc, uh, I'm no longer on that committee. Uh, Bill Cohen will, it will take my place. So you're up. Yeah. And so Bill's, Bill Cohen, okay. I mean, I can, being, I will still stay active. I'm just no longer officially on that committee. Did you get that, Paul? <laughs> And I think that that makes the voting pretty simplistic. Okay, we have to vote. We have to vote. Diane, did, uh, Diane Phelps has now appeared on the screen, so I'm not sure whether you have a, a comment or a question, Diane. Um, one comment was what Siobhan said, but the other is there has never been anyone um, on any of the boards um, on the committee, like none of the treasurers have ever been on it. It's always been independent, with the exception of one person. It's it's been the chair or the treasurer from GRF. So this is different. Um, if we're starting to add ex uh, sitting board members to represent the board, 
It is, it is different. Um, right. what's, what's unique about this, this particular situation or where we are now is all the members have a background in accounting and audit. The fact that they're on the board is incidental. Uh, in the past, everyone on that committee, I believe, has had a, a background in accounting, audits, or some other similar discipline that added value to that, <coughs> that uh, task force. So uh, we'll take, you know, it's a good point. We'll take a look at the charter, if there is one on that, to see whether or not we are in violation of any rules. But uh, I think we, you know, again, it's, it's going to be up to the task force chair. Uh, and uh, if that person doesn't have the kind of background that the task force chair feels is, is appropriate to add value to that, that task force, then I, I would say it would be up to that, that chair. Thank you. Any further changes or any objections to the? Are there any objections to the changes? Any objections to the resolution? Uh, and to the resolution. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. Hearing none, the resolution is adopted. Okay. Okay. Next on the list. <coughs> Okay, next up is number 12, new business, and um, entertain a motion to approve the temporary flexible facility and amenity operating procedures regarding Clubhouse One renovation. Okay. Resolution 90-24-X, temporary flexible facility and amenity operating procedures for Clubhouse One renovation. Whereas Clubhouse One and most of the surrounding amenities will close on March 4th through September 2nd, 2024 for 26 weeks for renovation and several club activities, classes and recreation activities need to be located, relocated to other facilities, creating potential impacts to attendance and operating procedures. And whereas the renovation is expected to create unforeseen factors that may require the need for urgent and immediate decisions to ensure that operations continue to run as smoothly as possible. And whereas, due to the timing of these potential issues, it will not be practical or timely to go through the standard committee and board approval process as unpredictable issues may include but are not limited to adjusting pool hours and temperatures, adjusting fitness center hours, limiting guest policies, modifying clubhouse rental fees, relocations of non-rental groups to open space, such as volleyball to Clubhouse 2, grass and badminton to Aliso Creek area, refunds and relocation and cancellation of activities. And whereas any necessary temporary adjustments to policies and operating rules will be discussed with involving departments, involved departments, the general manager's office, the community activities committee chair, and the Golden Rain Foundation board president, and whereas staff will report any temporary changes at the monthly CAC and GRF board meetings. Temporary decisions will remain in place until the project is complete and all activities have been moved back to their original locations. Now, therefore, be it resolved February 6, 2024, that the Board of Directors of this corporation hereby adopts staff's, staff temporary flexibility to adjust facility and amenity operating procedures during the Clubhouse One reno renovation. And resolve further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized to carry out this resolution as written. I move that we approve this resolution. Juanita seconds it. It's Juanita. been moved and seconded. Are there any objections or comments? Yeah. Mrs. Juanita? <clears throat> Our governance here in the village is cumbersome. It takes forever to do anything when you have to go <clears throat> from committee 
to committee, to board, in order to get uh, anything done. We need this resolution. We need to be able to uh, move quickly when we're going through this whole uh, update and renovation of Clubhouse One. And without it, there just is the possibility that things could get hung up on technicalities. So I encourage all of my board members to vote for it. Martin? Uh, regarding the, the, the grass area of uh, Aliso Creek area, is there any restroom facilities over there? Yes. There yes, is? Yes, there are. Oh, okay. Thank you. Separate. Okay. Any more comments? Okay. Are there any objections to the proposal? To the proposal? Hearing none, uh, it is adopted. Okay. Well, it says here number 13, a uh, five minute break, but I think we've only been operating for 45 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> so, uh, I will dispense with item 13 and move on if everybody's okay with that. All right, wonderful. Okay. And so we'll go to the committee reports. Um, we're moving right along here. Uh, just to do this. And just so you know, I've asked uh, the committee members um, to take a look at their charters. Uh, when we reviewed some of the charters, the charters were in some cases over 10 years old. And we wanted everybody to kind of take a look at them and update them. So I've asked the uh, committee chairs as they make their committee report, also report on how, where they stand in regards to uh, their charter update. So with that, we'll start off with uh, the finance report with uh, Director Cohen. Thank you. Um, we have not yet reviewed our charter. <clears throat> All right. Um, so let's go through these slides. Um, first chart includes all revenues and expenses, including those designated for reserves, uh, investment income, transfer facility fees, and the GRF reserve portion of the HOA fees through the reporting period of uh, December 31, 2023. GRF had a net revenue of $3,477,000 with a total revenue of $50,504,000 and total expenses of $47,027,000. GRF was better than budget by uh, <clears throat> $1,210,000 with the total expense coming in lower than budget by $1,227,000 primarily due to open positions throughout the organization payroll-wise. Uh, next slide, please. This next chart displays the operating fund, which includes non-operating revenues, expenses, and depreciation. This report shows a favorable variance of $756,000 through the reporting period with expenses better than budget by $1,006,000 offset by non-assessment revenue uh, being worse than budget by $250,000. And the next slide, please. All right, this slide reflects the current market value of the GRS reserves in discretionary investment portfolio compared to the original market value at the time of inception. The current market value of the GRF portfolio is $19,277,000 as of December 31, 2023, compared to the value at its inception of $19,031,000. Year to date, the market value increased by uh, $1,068,000 or 5.9%. Five, five, <clears throat> Um, an increase by $246,000 or 1.3 since inception in 2019. In December, the market value increased by $91,000 compared to the prior month. Slide four, please. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, of the $19,277,000 portfolio value I mentioned in the previous slide, $18,993,000 is held with our reserve por portfolio value. In addition to discretionary investments, the reserve fund assets also include non-discretionary investments of $9,883,000 in ca cash and qu cash equivalents of $3,939,000 payables other than, and other totaled 
309,000, resulting in a net reserve balance of $33,124,000. Number five, back to the operating fund, which has a more significant impact on uh, homeowners association assessments. This slide shows that our most significant operating operating only variances by category with green bars representing favorable variances to budget and orange bars representing unfavorable um, items. So we have favorables. Overall, we had favorable variances in the employee compensation and related of 1019000 primarily due to various vacancies in general service for janitorial positions, bus drivers, and pavers. In addition, landscape <coughs> excuse me, services has over 20 open positions for gardeners, and there are various open positions throughout the organization. Recruitment is in progress for all open positions. Other operating expenses of $251,000 uh, due to lower expenses than expected for training and education, recruiting fees, staff support, and filing fees and permits and uniforms. Various open positions throughout the company affected some of these items. Uh, repairs and maintenance of 249000 due to unused contingencies for internet hardware and computer repairs. Other unused contingencies include those for facility repairs at the community center for items such as painting, plumbing, and carpet repairs. And now for our unfavorables. <coughs> Outside services of $483,000 due primarily to higher aqu aquatics expenses and credit card transaction fees in recreation and broadband services compared to budget. The aquatics budget assumed the lap pool would not be staffed by lifeguards, which was ultimately, which was not ultimately approved. In addition to the time of budget, at the time of budget creation, it was assumed that credit card fees for all merchants would be passed on to residents. However, only the credit card fees are passed on to residents when the transactions are processed on active net. We do not pass on credit card fees for transactions processed on world pay or other platforms at this time. To a lesser extent, higher HVAC repairs and emergencies were necessary throughout the GRF facilities, which contributed to the unfavorable variance as well. Then we have utilities and telephone of $268,000 unfavorable variance, primarily due to high electricity and natural gas costs amongst all the departments for the first quarter of the year. Water provided a slight offset with a lower expenses than anticipated due to 69% more rainfall than recent years. Trash expenses were also lower due to a right sizing of trash bins at the service center. All right, slide six, please. There we go. This slide shows our resources of revenue other than the assessments such as fees and rentals. To date, we have received just over $10,107,000 of non-assessment operating revenue as shown in the pie chart. By category, we can see that our largest revenue is broadband services, the internet set-top boxes, ad insertion, and premium channels, followed by golf revenue, clubhouse rentals, and event fees, and merchandise sales. Other revenue, which includes class fees, additional occupant fees, equestrian center fees, and RV storage fees, amongst others, amount to 15%. These revenues offset costs and help keep assessments down. Slide number seven, uh, the chart here shows, as usual, our largest operating expense is compensation, followed by cable and programming expenses. Of the uh, 42.1 million, uh, excluding the depreciation, these two categories account for 72% of the total operating expenses. Insurance, professional, legal, utilities, and uh, fuel, uh, outside services, et cetera, make up the remaining 28%. If you consider that uh, cable programming are offset by broadband revenue, compensation accounts for 69% of the net expense, while insurance, utilities, and outside services account for 31% of the net operating expense. Slide eight, please. Um, the reserve and restricted funds adjusted balances are shown here. Uh, starting with the first column on the left, reserve funds have a combined ending balance of 41.7 million. Restricted fund balances have an ending balance of $4 million. Included in this uh, total are contributions received this year through assessments, trust facility fees, and investment earnings. The second column shows the work in progress of $8.6 million for reserve and $43,000 for restricted, reflecting the amounts paid for projects not yet completed. 
The third column represents the resulting adjusted fund balances of 31.1 million for reserves and 3.9 million for restriction. Right. And number nine, we have a slide <clears throat> chart here showing the resale history from uh, 2021 to 2023. Community-wide sales total 766 through December 31, 2023. Most of these transactions generate the trust facilities fee transfer fee used as a source for revenue for all our reserves. And slide number 10. Um, this listing on the slide gives you an idea of where the money, the reserve money is committed. Of the 19.6 million appropriated by the board for various projects and equipment purchases, the remaining encumbrances against our reserve fund is 9.1 million, primarily for purchase or replacement of equipment throughout the facilities. Restricted funds and total appropriations of 98,000 and no remaining encumbrances. And then slide 11. Um, when we compare our adjusted fund balances to historical balances for the past five years on this chart, um, showing the GRF has averaged 27.1 million in reserve funds and 2.3 million in contingency funds. And that ends my report. is the Finance Committee report. Uh, let me see what I got. All right, we, let me see what we got here. We met on December 20. Yeah, I think we reported on that. Sorry? I think we reported on that already, so. All right. You only you meet once every two, two I don't months. know that I have further report. Okay. Um, next is the community activities. That's me. Okay. Yvonne. Thank you. Um, the CAC didn't have a meeting in January, and uh, our next meeting is going to be February 8th at 1.30 here in the boardroom. Um, on our charter, our current charter was uh, from 2011, and it will be on our M March agenda for the updates on that. Um, anyway, thank you. That's my report. All right, we have landscape report. <coughs> thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> the Landscape Committee met in November, November 8th, and uh, our next meeting is next week, February 14th, and some of the things that we will be looking at at the meeting next week are, number one, our charter, number two, <clears throat> report from the Aliso Creek biologist. This is a report that we get uh, quarterly uh, where they inspect that there's pictures, shows uh, how we're doing, how it's been cleaned up. Uh, any of the uh, concerns that they have. Uh, we'll have the El Toro Water District uh, month quarterly report. And I just point out that the meeting on February 14th is at 2 p.m. instead of at 1.30. We had to move it up half an hour since there's another meeting in here earlier. So. Okay. All right, next. Uh Underneath that, maintenance and construction is uh, clubhouse renovation ad hoc. And then uh, space planning. I'll have space planning. Are there any updates? Yeah, we'll have a meeting later this month. Um, I haven't got a date yet. And uh, I've got a copy of the... Uh, uh, yeah, i got a moment charter. here. Charter. I've got a copy of the charter. And... Uh, uh, We've, there's been some work on it, but I think it needs to be updated because we, we're going from the Clubhouse 1 ad hoc committee to all clubhouses. That was made, but the charter wasn't changed to reflect that. So I'll get working on that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And with regards to the uh, space planning ad hoc, as you know, that 
ad hoc committee was formed to take a look at building E, uh, replacement, a possible replacement. And uh, we, got a, we had a great series of presentations from uh, Manuel Gomez uh, concerning all the discussions going back to, to 2011 on the replacement of building E. Uh, apparently, Building E was in pretty bad shape in 2011. There was a recommendation to replace that for a fee much for an expense much less than what we're looking at today, obviously. Uh, it came up also in 2020, which we did a bunch of reviews on, and now we're in 2024. So, what, so the next meeting that we have is really going to uh, solicit from our committee members solutions to our space planning uh, as a result of um, uh, building E. So stay tuned. Next is the report of the Media and Communications Committee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Media and Communications Committee met in January. Sorry. And at that time, we discussed our charter. Uh, since media and communication has been changed, from a depart uh, the division of of media is now under the office of the. Uh, I'm sorry, is now a separate item under broadband, and uh, communications will be under the CEO's office. So anything to do with the television studio and broadband services, and internet services and media and services and. Uh, Internet services and media services are no longer under our purview. <coughs> so we're changing our charter, eliminating those sections from the charter, and I'll get together with you, Martin. Um, and so that was part of that meeting, and our next meeting for media and communications will be uh, in April, since we decided we didn't need to meet every single month or even every other month. <coughs> so we're meeting quarterly. So our next meeting will be April 15th, 2024 at 1:30 here in this in this building, and uh, as far as the website uh, <coughs> committee ad hoc committee report, they're still in the process of discovery, <coughs> and uh, the web regular website ad hoc committee meetings will resume once the discovery phase is complete, and significant data can be shared with the from the discovery process. And that ends my report. Thank you. Uh, next is the broadband ad hoc. Yes, uh, <clears throat> Mr. President, uh, the broadband ad hoc committee had a closed uh, committee uh, meeting on November 20th, uh, 2023. And our next meeting is scheduled to be actually on February 14th, 2024. And yeah, I've got a, a, a bullet to get with uh, Joan about uh, adjusting our charter that uh, now will differentiate the two, um, uh, broadband and um, media and communications. And that's where we're at right now, considering it's closed. That's all I can do. Okay. So, thank you. All right. Uh, next is Mobility and Vehicles Committee. Reina. Robert Carroll has reached out to me, but the committee has not had a meeting. Okay. So the next meeting is actually tomorrow. Mm-hmm. All right. At uh, 1.30? Yes. Uh, in the boardroom. Right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the Security and Communities Access Committee, Director Skillman. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> we met January 17th. Uh, excuse me, October 25th, <laughs> and uh, our next meeting is February 28th, and some of the things that we will be looking at at that meeting are our charter, vehicle registrations, our rules say all vehicles, that includes all golf carts, electric, bicycles, anything that is a vehicle, uh, and we need to clarify that, so we're, we're looking at, uh, at that. Um, and we'll also be getting an update on the stop sign project. And uh, traffic hearings. Oh. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, traffic hearings, those were the ones that were held on, on January 17th. Okay. Uh, the next hearings are February 21st. These are closed hearings. And uh, we can't report on it except that we had seven people. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, that's quite a few. All right. Um, executive hearings, Director Millman. We met. Um, That's okay. Yeah, right there. February 1st. Right. February 1st. The committee met uh, February 1st uh, in the... I don't have it. It was uh, in the Willow Room. In the Willow Room, yes. right. Thank you. <laughs> and our next meeting is... <laughs> can, can you inform... Uh, the I, I residents, don't... what an executive hearing is. Yeah. <laughs> an executive hearing is relates to people who have had some problems or are in trouble in the in the village, and they come before this executive committee to for a, for a hearing uh, and and state their case, and we look at them and uh, and judge help judge whether they need to be punished or not. I'm sorry, <laughs> but it's it's really not as unfriendly as it may seem. Um, we're basically all residents, and so we're sympathetic. But if someone is just flagrantly out there, we have to come down kind of hard. So we've imposed fines or other restrictions, and all of it is is totally confidential within that hearing. Therefore, I can't tell you much more about it. But don't be afraid to come because we're we're a pretty friendly group, even though we are going to be judgmental. <laughs> we we try to be as fair. We are as fair as we can possibly be, and that's all I have Thank to you. say. So, so our next meeting is. <coughs> help me! I don't see yeah, so the, the information. The March seventh in the, in the Willow Room. March seventh in the Willow Room. Willow Room. Thank you. I'm sorry. Okay, thank, thank, thank you. you. If I thank might you. add, this also gives residents an opportunity to present their cases and speak. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's much like the traffic hearing, but without traffic. <laughs> With not traffic. Yeah, I, I had the unfortunate circumstance of appearing before the traffic uh, hearings, and uh, I was judged guilty. <laughs> This was uh, eight years ago, so I've been a good boy since. 25 miles an hour. All right. Um, next is the Disaster Preparedness Task Force, Director Skillman. Disaster Preparedness Task Force met January 30th. Our next meeting is March 6th, and uh, we... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> We are looking at how we can better engage our uh, neighborhood captains. Uh, <clears throat> we work hard to get people to sign up to be a neighborhood or a block captain. But then, because, thank goodness, we don't have an emergency, we don't have an earthquake, we don't have a disaster, there's really nothing for them to do. They've gathered the information about the people in their area. Um, they're ready, able, and then it just kind of falls apart because there's nothing for them to do. So we're looking at what we can do, maybe quarterly uh, table exercises so that they get some, uh, and then uh, to reinstate the Red Cross and uh, um, other trainings that we have had in the past. And many of them already had it, but they can always get an update on it. And we're also looking to see how we can work with the city. As a private community, we are limited in resources that we can get from the state and federal government. So uh, if we work with the city cooperatively, they can get it because they're a public entity. So that's what we're working on now. Thank you, Director Skillman. And now for the Information Technology Advisory Committee. And that's, that's a committee that I chair. 
Uh, just a little, a brief comment or just understanding of what that is. A few years ago, we engaged in a software study. Our software was uh, very, very ancient and didn't reflect the newest technology, so we decided to take a look at that. And by the way, that was under the uh, initiation of both uh, uh, director at the time, Sue Margolis, and Andre Torg. They both uh, studied it, and then GRF kind of took it over and then took it to the next step, which is to actually go and seek vendors to do that, do this work. Uh, our processes in the village, in some cases, are, are as old as the village uh, and have never really been updated. So, so in this process is not just piece of software. This is actually updating most, if not all, of the administrative process within the village digitizing it, making it so that it is much easier to implement uh, and much uh, friendlier to the residents in terms of feedback and all of those things and, and supports VMS in terms of being able to, um, to service us in the best way possible. Uh, we engaged uh, a company called Ventico. They, and so our meetings are basically updates on the progress of that uh, activity. It was about a three year um, uh, program two and a half to three years. It's taken a little longer because we're digging up processes that in some cases we didn't know existed and don't know why it did exist. But in doing so, we've discovered and being able to update a lot of these processes as we go along. So with that said, we are approximately, um, we had announced the last time that we, we thought we would finish phase one uh, somewhere around the end of January. That's now been moved out to May, all right? But in doing, moving out to May, what we've discovered is we are now actually fixing some things that were actually scheduled to be fixed in phase two and phase three, just because of the way the process works. So with, even though we are late in terms of the, um, uh, the schedule, the estimate as of right now is that it will not uh, result in any additional fees as a result of being behind the schedule. So again, we, we, we hold our feet to the fire, we hold the vendor feet to the fire, uh, and, um, uh, and, and I, I think we're doing, or they're doing, and we are doing a superb job personally. Uh, but you know, we, we have these hiccups, and everybody that's a member of the committee uh, asks some very serious questions. You know, they're all have a background in either IT or something similar to that. So we're, we're, um, we're pleased as to where we are, given all the circumstances. But uh, we, are, uh, we don't expect to, go to finish phase one until May. And that may be in jeopardy by a month or two. But uh, just so we have everybody has an update on that. With that, we'll move to item number 15. Uh, any any comments? Um, I was just wondering if you wanted an update on um, maintenance and construction. You her. <laughs> Did I skip you? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll have an update on maintenance and construction. Okay. Committee. <laughs> um, our last meeting was on uh, December 20th. We got updates on all the projects. Um, and our next monthly meeting is uh, December 14th um, here in the boardroom. Um, and our agenda will be, uh, an update on our agenda will also be um, on this agenda. And a side note, I'd like to give some shout outs to the MNC department because uh, they answered 88 calls between Saturday and Monday for roof leaks and took care of them. So thank you, m &C. That concludes my report. Thank you. Yeah, I, I get those reports too. And it's, it's amazing what we take for granted here that, you know, our folks are here to, to support and help us. And this is an unprecedented rain that we're having, and the, their reaction to it has been superb. Even though those who are having those problems probably are not very happy, and, but uh, it's 88 out of 
13,000 isn't too bad. <laughs> Considering it's 60 years old. Okay. All right, we'll move on to item 15, which is future agenda items. And I'm seeing here discussion on ID badge enforcement. And Juanita? If I can speak on that just for a minute. Uh, what we found is there is a difference in our rules uh, within the mutuals and GRF. Uh, and to, is to the cost of replacement, particularly of the badges. If it's just um, if your badge is lost or stolen, but you're still a resident and you need the badge, or if you leave the village and just don't return it. And that's the one that we're having a problem with because uh, particularly renters or lessees, they leave the village, they don't return their badge, and then they feel they can come back and, and use it. Uh, and there are many of our amenities and uh, there that do not have the swipe and do not know if they have a badge to show, they get in there. So that's what we'll be looking at. <laughs> with, on this side, with the uh, director, Gann. Uh, I have one comment regarding what we are doing in cost saving. Maybe I have addressed that issue to Sylvan in a different way. Uh, I find that we are trying to save money, and it's a very good idea. But uh, that should not be at the cost of certain amenities or provisions that we have for elderly people who are not very computer savvy or they don't have, cannot use computer and things like that. So hard copies will be required for those people. So I would suggest that please consider while you are doing cost saving in different areas, certain uh, hard copy provisions and other, uh, other uh, efforts to reach to those elderly people is taken into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Good meeting as usual. We didn't have a lot to say today. And we're out early. Lunch is, no, never mind. <laughs> Thank you, welcome. I'm glad to be here. Thank you, Jim. Juanita? <clears throat> I look at the clock and I'm amazed. I think this is the <coughs> most efficient meeting that we, we've had. Uh, <coughs> and I congratulate you on going through. Uh, I, I would like to comment that I, I empathize with Ellen's uh, comments this morning. Um, I have to wade through about a four foot, I call it a river, a <laughs> stream. Uh, that comes down, because I live on a hillside, and it comes down the middle of my street, and to get from my manor to my carport, <coughs> and it's, it's fairly deep. So there just is not a good drain system set up within the village. That's the way it was built. I don't know that it's correctable by us. Uh, we do have some drains on our main streets, but our cul-de-sacs particularly do not. And when the unusual happens, like today, and we have these horrible rains, um, you better bring your wading boots. <laughs> well, well, <clears throat> excuse me, we've all been watching the local news, and I mean, it looks like uh, uh, scenes from a movie, uh, some of the disasters that have uh, occurred, uh, the slides and whatnot. Uh, I I'm, I know there are some walkway uh, hazards, you know, especially when the rains are really coming down. But I, I mean, I'm seeing uh, aside a few leaky roofs, probably a few cracked um, uh, uh, um, gutters. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm very impressed with how well the staff is doing with respect to handling the storm, and and I just encourage the members. Please, safety is number one. Safety is number one. Okay? Thank you. I have no further comments at this time. 
I have no comment. <laughs> yeah, I got a comment on something. Uh, in the CEO report, we were told that we're collecting 135 tons last year of organic material. And I, I don't remember, but I think we're being charged both by the, by the amount, of, by the tonnage, or by the weight. And um, just taking a look at that number and running some quick calculations, that seems extremely unlikely. I'm going to check into it some more. It doesn't look like, you know, uh, that implies that my building collects 300 pounds of that stuff a week. And I know personally that from when I drop stuff off, I've never seen our little container more than a quarter full. So if we're being charged by tonnage, that's a number we need to look into because that didn't look right. Thank you. I would like to echo Director Garden's comments and good meeting. Thank you. And Thank you. kudos to the staff for yeah. the way they're handling all our little dilemmas. Thank you. And, and I think kudos to the staff for many, many reasons. One is this short meeting uh, is really attributable to the work that staff has done to deal with the concerns of the residents prior to us having this meeting. And so what happens many times is there's a lot of comments, there's a lot of concerns from residents, rightfully so. And they will come and during that 30 minute session, all right, uh, they, will, they will voice their concerns. Uh, maybe because of the rain or whatever, but I'm going to attribute it to the work that, that uh, uh, Manuel Gomez and Allison Giglio did in terms of dealing with Clubhouse One issues. Uh, we tried to get those issues done prior to these concerns being raised at the meeting. They were successful in doing that. And so I think they contributed more to the brevity of this meeting than anything else. And we're going to try to do that. And we try to do that. So this, they, were, they were very instrumental in that. So I appreciate everybody. And with that, I am going to recess the meeting to close meeting. And uh, President Hopkins, what time would you like to reconvene for closed? Uh, it's at 1047 right now. 1047. What's a good time? 1130. Hmm? 1130. 1130. Is that good? Okay. Thank you. 1130. Okay.